Ever, ever since the crash of FTX and Solana in, in general, I did a bit of soul searching and, you know, I thought to myself, how do I know if Solana is actually succeeding? And the conclusion I reached is, well, let's look at the on-chain data. So that's what I did. I put up a website, joshchain.io, which you can see right here. And as you see, all it does is it has a graph of transactions per second on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, as we all know, Solana also includes their voting mechanism and their transactions. So we needed to, a way to separate the true TPS from the overall TPS. And this is the result. So instead of my usual video where I talk about how we would make it, I thought, you know, let's just talk about some of the things that were involved in the making of this specific website, which I will just use as a personal website. If you have any like features or suggestions or charts that you want to see made, do leave me a message in the comment or I guess it's on my Twitter handle or whatever. So how do we make this website? So the first thing I had to choose was what framework should I use? So for those who've been following this channel, you know that I made this weird one off shot uh, video about uh, Next.js development, which you can find up here or up here. And uh, the reason why I chose Next.js is because it was a easy all-in-one production ready solution. It has Webpack, Babel, Hot Reloading, and essentially it was just a very easy way to create a single page application. Or right, so the next thing I had to figure out was I had to pick a theme for the website. I didn't want to just put any crummy theme together. I wanted to at least look decent or maybe responsive. And so the first thing I did was, you know, I Googled around, I looked for some themes for Next.js, like on themeforest.net. And, you know, uh, it turns out that uh, these themes actually cost money and uh, money right now is not something I have in this recession. So what did I decide to do next? So I decided, you know what, since I'm too poor to afford a theme, let's just make a layout ourselves. And so to do that, I decided to look up a custom UI framework to use. I did some searching around and found this Reddit thread, and there were some suggestions about which uh, framework was available to us. That was a, for me, it was a toss up between Chakra and Mantine, I think is how you pronounce it. And I ended up choosing Mantine because I really liked the app shell component that it had, which is essentially just a way to lay out your website. I know Chakra also had something similar as a separate template that you could have used, but you know, I, I kind of liked that Mantine was just more um, built into the library itself. And plus, I have actually never really worked with Mantine before, so I want to try playing with that. So great, I have the UI framework, I built the website and the layout, and now it's actually time to make the chart. And to do the make the chart, I use something called Chart.js. I was thinking of getting into the D3 rabbit hole, but I decided, you know, this is something simple, and if the use case shows up, then we'll learn it. So Chart.js, it's mostly a JavaScript library. Uh, it turns out there wasn't built in React support, so I had to find this other library that built is that built on top of it that is react friendly so it wasn't that hard to really install and use it and the, the, you know just follow the documentation and you can build a line chart quite easily all right so i have the ui framework i have the chart library now i need to actually get the data for my so i looked around to see where i can find apis to get the number of transactions salon had and the closest thing i got to it is this wonderful site called bitquery.io uh, as you can see, they, it uses GraphQL, and um, it allowed me to get all the transactions I wanted. But the problem I found soon is that there's no way I can separate a vote transaction, which you can learn more, by the way, by visiting my architecture video that I made about Solano and how that all works. But there's no way we can separate our, uh, our voting transaction from a regular user transaction. And so I dug around a bit, and I found Medium posts made by... Uh, from Solana FM, which showed that all the vote transactions that Solana made are actually all include instructions with the name with the program name vote one 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 one. And so, looking back into BigQuery, I found out that I can look just I can search for instructions and then filter by that program name. And then to validate and make sure that this works, I went on to the blockchain itself to see if one instruction is tied to one transaction because that's not necessarily true a single transaction might contain multiple instructions. Luckily for me, in this instance, one vote instruction does tie to one transaction. So there we go. I now have a way to obtain the true TPS. And to you know, actually validate and make sure that my numbers are correct, I went to Solana.fm and looked at their TPS and compared it with the, the traction I did. And I found out that, yeah, 
Um, it's pretty close. Uh, Solana.fm does like like minute by minute, where uh, what I'm trying to do is trying to do daily TPS, so it's like averages that. But I think in the end, this achieves what we want anyways, because we want to see overall after the whole FDX scandal, are our users leaving the Solana ecosystem? And uh, actually looking at the charts right now from this moment in this video, it seems like it's relatively stable, so that's promising. All right, so next we have our data. We want to be able to store our data, data in a database somewhere. But before we talk about that, I wanted to talk about the host and where I'm hosting my uh, my Next.js application. And that choice was made pretty easily because the creator of Next.js, Parcel, has their own hosting platform that they so conveniently made. Parcel is very straightforward to use. All you had to do was upload your repository to their to your account, and then it'll just deploy your instance for you. So super easy. So why did I bring this up? Well, there were some design decisions that were made when choosing the database to store the all the these transaction data. So you know, as always, we have our SQL or NoSQL solution that we can think of. But then I thought to myself, you know, let's be more economical. So what is a database? At the end of the at the end of the day, a database is basically it's just a text file. And all we're really doing here is we're just adding, we're just appending these new transactions into the end of a list. So I thought, well, what if I just have a text file and then just every day just update it with the newest transaction, and then I would just parse that every single time I load the site, and then not pay any money for an actual database. Well, it turns out that uh, because of Parcel and how it hosts the data, I realized that it's. I think it's still doable, but it's more complicated because now every time if I want to run a transaction with the newest data, I have to get the data, update the text file, and then push my changes to the repo, which then will get deployed on Parcel. It's quite involved, especially if I'm looking to automate it. And so I thought, okay, you know, forget it. Let's just set up a database and see where that goes. Technically, I think NoSQL will work the best. Um, we're not really shooting for any consistencies. I'm technically not even sure what the schema of the data really is, and we can continuously add more to it. I decided just to use SQL because I've heard good things about Superbase, which is the database of choice that I ended up using. And so I use that. You know, worst case, it's not a big deal. I'll just pivot and array for being small. So that is how we have the data. Um, so some fun problems I ran into when I first started populating the data was that I had a off by one error. Um, I accidentally skipped the date June 23rd, 2022. And I was talking to a friend, they're like, it's fine, Josh, no one's ever gonna notice it. Well, they will, because if you look at this chart where I didn't fix it, you can see we have some negative TPSs because there's these two weird dates that had gigantic spikes in transactions for some reason. And so, yeah, dates are very important. But yeah, okay, so now we have a database, we have the data, um, we have our chart now, but you know, it's kind of hard to see all the data points in this chart. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add zooming capabilities. Luckily, chart.js had that functionality. And so we just need to use it. Three, four, right? What can possibly go wrong? Well, it turns out we ran into some problems with Next.js, how they handle server-side rendering. Essentially what Next.js does is when you import a library, it's being ran both locally like on the client side on your browser and it's also being ran on a server and one of the dependencies that the zoom plugin for chart.js uses is the windows and for those who work in javascript what you you know that windows is something on your browser and it's not on the server side and so i get this wonderful error where next.js does not have window defined and so how did i solve it well, after a lot of digging around, I found out that the answer actually is just to or dynamically load the component on the client side, AKA I use this wonderful dynamic library to render my chart component. And this would only get executed on the client side and not on the server side. And this would prevent me from loading the code that would call the window object on the server side. So awesome. Solve that problem. And so next up, you know, we're almost there. I wanted to save some money on my database. And to accomplish that, I decided to take advantage of server-side rendering, what, which by the way, I will plug it again, but check out my um, Next.js video to learn more about server-side rendering and caching so that you don't have to, so you don't have to call your database multiple times. So yeah, that was pretty straightforward uh, because we're only looking to update our database once a day. 
I, I just need to set an expiration on my cache for making server side rendering to be one a day, roughly around the time we refresh it, so that when people visit the site, they actually don't have to go to the database again. They can just use what is already saved. That's saving me money. Huzzah. All right, so after all that, we finally got our website working. We have data. We just now need a way to constantly update the database. And, and let me tell you, I'm not manually going in every single day and adding the newest data from BigQuery. And so how did I do it? I needed to do a daily operation. So that sounds like a cron job, but I didn't know how to set one up. And so after searching around a bit, I found out this wonderful feature that GitHub has called GitHub Actions. And so what GitHub Action does, it's essentially a script or I guess a workflow that you can set on your Git repository. And so I set up a GitHub Action that has a cron job which I use crontab.guru to help me figure out. And what I would do with that is I would make a curl request to a separate API endpoint that I made and hosted somewhere. And what that endpoint would do is it would make a request to BigQuery to get the latest transaction information and store in a database, which then would be used on my next JS application. Uh, one hiccup I did encounter though, is that I assumed for some reason that everything worked in PST, specific standard time. Turns out that was not the case. It operated in UTC. So I just had to update my cron job to support the correct time. But outside of that, that was it. So there you go. That was how we made joshchang.io. I'll be hopefully constantly updating it to add new parameters to keep track of how Solana is doing overall. And you know, I intend to add uh, metrics for other cryptocurrencies too, probably Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, things like that. So if you have any suggestions on what you want to see, please leave them in the comments below or tweet me. Uh, I'd be, I think it would just be a fun little dashboard to see how the crypto ecosystem is going on. And if it becomes popular enough, I'll probably move it away from a portfolio website and into its own domain. So that being said, now that this is finished and I can stop taking detours, it's time to go back to my bread and butter, Solana development. Sneak preview of what's coming up next. We're going to create a web three version of Reddit. And I'm gonna call it sold it. Because you know, I sold it to Solana. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go over the white papers of that and then we're actually gonna start developing it. So stay excited until then. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to roll out content more frequently because I decided to finally just chop everything down to smaller pieces. Hopefully I'll get something out later this week, but we shall see. So yeah, uh, stay excited and I will see you all later. Bye.